we're going to look at the series um, when n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 1. And we would like to determine what it converges to and that it converges. So if I write out the first couple of terms, my first term is going to be n equals 1, which will be 1 over 1 times 2. n equals 2 is going to give me 1 over 2 times 3. And the next one will be 1 over 3 times 4, and so on from here. So I'd like to determine whether or not this converges. In order to tell if a series converges, we look at the partial sums, adding the first few terms together. So my first partial sum is a half, just my first term. My second one is a half plus a sixth, which is my second term, plus my first term. My third partial sum will be a half plus a sixth plus a twelfth. And I create a sequence of partial sums this way. If the limit of these partial sums exists, we call that the sum of the series. So generally, it is not possible to tell what the limit of the partial sums is unless you can get a nice closed formula for each partial sum. A half plus a sixth is two-thirds. A half plus a sixth plus a twelfth will be two-thirds plus a twelfth, which is going to be three-quarters. If we write down the next one, s4 is going to be three-quarters, that's s3, plus the next term, which will be 1 over 4 times 5. So 3 quarters plus 1 over 20 is going to be 16 twentieths, which is the same as 4 fifths. And so we can see a nice pattern happening here. Our nth partial sum, our s sub n, is going to be maybe n over n plus 1. In order to actually prove this, we would have to do something additional, something like induction or something a little bit easier to look at. What we're going to do instead is we're going to approach this a slightly different way, and we're going to use the idea of a telescoping series. 1 over n times n plus 1 looks like something that when we integrate we would use partial fractions for. So we can do the same thing here, and if the partial fractions work out nicely, our partial sums are going to be much easier to, be, to work with. So 1 over n times n plus 1 should look like a over n plus b over n plus 1. If you multiply through by your denominator, what you end up with is 1 is equal to a times n plus 1 plus b times n. So this is equal to 1. And I'm not going to show you the steps here, but if you go through the partial fraction steps, you get your values for a and b, and you're going to end up with a is equal to 1. and b is equal to negative 1. Okay, so if I rewrite the series this way, I'm going to end up with the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And when a series turns out something like this, this is called telescoping, because as you'll see, the partial sums have a very nice property. S1 is 1 minus a half, which is just a half. But then S2 is going to be what we have here, 1 minus a half plus a half minus a third. And those middle terms, the negative a half plus a half, cancel, leaving us with just 1 minus a third. S3 is going to be S2, 1 minus a third, plus the next term, which is the third minus a fourth. So my middle terms cancel again, and I'm ending up with 1 minus a quarter. And so when it's like this, we don't have to guess at a at a form for Sn. We can see that it's going to end up as 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. And so if I want to know the series itself from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 1, this is the same as the limit of the partial sums. And either way that you write the partial sums, what we see is that this limit is going to be the limit of 1 over 1 minus, or 1 minus 1 over n plus 1, which is just going to be 1. So we would say that the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 1 is equal to 1.